I'd like to call to order the uh, 2229 Main Street Oversight Committee meeting. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Do we need to vote for calling to order? I don't think so. <laughs> um, uh, Pam, thank you for sending out to everybody a, a package of information, which included the minutes, if I can find them in here. The minutes are the first thing after the agenda. Yeah, that's it. A two sided. There's two pages. So. And then the rest are various correspondence that have gone on in the past few months. And I wasn't sure whether everybody, there was a record where everybody could see those because they were like your correspondence you said to Tara is in here. Right. So, yeah. so now they are public because they're in the meeting packet and posted on our website. Ebony was a great help during the setting of that. Anybody have any comments on the minutes? Um, just the, there's one little typo on the first paragraph. Um, right after uh, via Zoom, at, uh, it says 110 at 30. Uh, I'm not sure whether we met at 11 or 10 30. It was 10 30. It, it does actually say 10 20 April the next time down. I guess I missed it. So, yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, then that looks good. I make a motion that we accept the minutes with the correction from the minor ty typographical error all second. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Dottie? Dottie. Yep, I, uh, I wasn't sure if I was just the liaison or a voting member, uh, but I, I uh, approve Is as well. A voting member? Who's the person? Yeah, we've... We can double check with the town, but we've always considered all the the board of health and the um, uh, national research NRC one being voting members. So sounds good. Then I vote so, aye. Thank you. Okay. Um, so uh, our next thing on the agenda is to discuss some well discuss new documents but i want if i can uh if we can you know i apologize for not something that's to your plan but do we want to touch base based on things that occurred since last month uh such as do we have any feedback um from regarding the, the board of select Persons, select board, excuse me, uh, to, uh, site tour. Um, that wasn't per se for our meeting, but um, the other committee, I don't know, Pam, if you attended. Um, so that I could do that with the liaison. Okay, the you want to do that with the liaisons? Okay. Um, and do we get any feedback? I don't recall seeing it on. Um, just losing my track of mind there. We uh, we submitted so, extensive comments on the uh, site wide setup and soils right. phase two PDI. But then we also ask about the sampling separately. 
Kim, did you reach out? So there's a response from Kara about, did I miss that about in my where. So that's um, one, two, three, yeah. four. Yep, it's, uh, it's on the... Uh, it's on the page after the comment right. that, that, um, on the pre-design investigation. And um, she commented about where the rowels, where you get the rowels from and where you get the... Um, I guess she didn't really, and she commented where the confirmation sampling is done, which you just showed pictures of, right? Len, um, you looked them up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Everybody can see that. So, Ray, can you see so, that? So, that's can that's the screen? screen. Um, I don't think so because he's not on. I'm not on so what document is that so that we can, for those who are... are... This is uh, AOA, the 100% uh, remedial design for AOA 8 and AOA 9. And it's in the back. And there's of the... a link of, to that in the meeting minutes. Okay. In, in the, it, it, sorry, in the meeting notes in that letter from Tara, right, so. which is dated August 26th. Uh, for those online audience, very. Um, so, we're, Len has a sampling drawing, and it's one, two, three, four, the fifth page of the document. It would be, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Kim. Yeah. The link on the third paragraph, this is 100% phase one RD. No, it's actually it, further down. Oh, it's the next one. It's, it's the third one down, which is AOI 89 100%. RV. Okay, so it's just it's the same thing, but it's the next, it's the farther part of that line. So, okay. Nick is trying to log in. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, he just mentioned it. I... Yeah, well. So the history on this, Dottie, can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. So the history on this is that they, there are different kinds of sampling grids for different sorts of activities. So when they were digging out under a couple of the buildings, they were looking to find where there was clean soil so they could put it back while they were investigating what was under that, those things, as opposed to dispose of. And during that, they were using a 30 foot grid. They were using one sample in a 30 foot grid. Um, and the and that was really felt like that was not a close, a good enough, a tight enough grid for a, for you to really determine if something was sensible to put back in the ground that you wanted a, a smaller grid. So the committee had questions about well, where what about confirmatory sampling, which happens at the end? What um, level of sampling grid is used for that confirmatory sampling. And so we actually wrote a letter to Kara Nuremberg, uh, Nuremberg, 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 who is the project manager for EPA for this site. And we asked her about, and by letter, I mean email, um, for the links for, there was one area that was already done. And um, Len actually looked that up, and we were thinking that it was a 10-foot grid, but you found a 20-foot grid. Well, it looks like it's, um, yeah, I mean, it looks like it's a 20-foot grid. Or five composite samples in a 20-foot grid, and it looks like more what we've got here, which is a lot more, uh, you know, a lot better for characterization than uh, one sample in a 30-foot grid. So mm -hmm. we go from... Uh, five samples in a 20 foot grid to one sample in a 30 foot grid. Big difference. That's a and huge so, difference. So the the other part of this is, is that the soil samples, the, the soil removal that's going to happen at the site, there's areas under the buildings and around the buildings where things leaked out in, drain, in drainage area. There's an old, there was an old sweepings pile, which was basically dredgings from a non-contact cooling pond that was never supposed to get contaminated, but got terribly contaminated, that were piled up, basically backed up to Minuteman Arc in that area. And there were, there was an old overflow 
area outside the cooling pond on the other side of the property that backed up to Cranberry Lane. So it's also an area where there was soil and the soil next to Cranberry Lane and the soil next to um, Minuteman Arc have already been dug up, cleaned up, they were a little more contaminated than expected, so a lot more material was removed than originally planned, but they have been restored to natural at this point, and they are the example of what the cleanups are going to look like for the other areas of soil, and that was why we looked to that information to figure out how they determined what confirmatory sampling grid to use and what, um, what uh, um, the the remedial action levels are for what materials to remove. Yeah, that's the other thing is the remedial action levels. Um, I uh, I I think that they should get rid of them. Actually, and there's a there's a note uh, I saw in the email from Kara. Uh, I'm going to read this. Um, this is from Kara, uh, and answering to your uh, your email email Pam. Once the pre-designed investigation of the former buildings are complete. Rails for these areas may be calculated, and then she puts in parentheses, or the SDs and the settling defendants may select to use the site cleanup levels. Now that's what I think they should be using, the site cleanup levels, not the rails. So you don't think that the rail might end up being more protective in some No, way? the the, the rails is always going to be higher than the site cleanup level. Okay. Um and I think that we can we we should put in our comments this time around that we strongly urge the Maximus to to use the cleanup levels rather than the, rather than artificially uh, calculated rails. And I can give you three or four good reasons why. Um, and what uh, are we commenting on? Uh, well, we're going to be commenting on right now on the sixty percent. Holding base and remedial design. That's but that's, that has nothing to do with right. No, that. but I think maybe if we can we can probably fit this. Well, what in. was the other one that Kara sent out a link to? Uh, that was the uh, ISS. The uh, is it ninety five percent ISS? Yeah, I think we should wait until we're doing a soil. Well, review. Yeah, kites or something. We're going to make a comment about the soil. Well, I thought that, that we could just let them know ahead of time that we, this is where we're, we're setting our line line in the sand here. Um, because, it, I mean, it, we're, we're not getting what we want. Uh, we wanted the uh, the wall to be keyed into bedrock, and that's not going to be the case. Uh, for most of the wall. Okay, we're changing. You just changed yeah, wait, wait, the subject yeah, what's, 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 okay. what we're well, talking about. Then, okay, this is the 60% RD what, what, without what, holding what, base. One second. What's, what's, so we're going to, at this point, table the discussion on the uh, site cleanup level versus the, the RAL and, and go to the the 60% holding base holding Okay, base. so Len is suggesting that we send an extra comment about that. Yeah. I, I, and we could send that totally. Right, right. So, so do we want... Do we want to do that? Do we want to do that or do we want to... I, I recommend we, at this point, maybe... Pam, let's put that on hold. Okay. And, okay. And, Len, and because I, I want to, at some point before the end of this meeting, discuss, do we need to have another meeting Move, add an additional meeting or move the meeting in October based on the deadline that we were given for. Yeah. So uh, for the other for the the uh, injection design. Yeah. Yeah. And so and we can figure out timing based on those yeah. items. So. so we're moving on to the holding basin design. Yeah. This yeah. this is a sixty percent, but we're not getting a lot of stuff uh, because they uh, they they still got to consult with the contractor that they hire. So um, most of the stuff in the sixty percent is general uh, and a rehash of, uh, of the PDIs that they did before. Um, 
So I think that we said in our minutes from in our last meeting that we wanted to look carefully at the prospect of ending the sidewall in the till layer instead of keying it into the bedrock for the entire width or, uh, length of the the cap the thing and the new cap design which is shorter. So did anyone have anything they found in the holding basin design that wasn't that? Was uh, one of those two things to discuss? A couple of things. Um, they're gonna you're gonna excavate a trench three feet three feet wide down to probably at maximum 80 feet before they can backfill it with anything. Um, now there's gonna be a lot of hydrostatic pressure on that soil uh, and a lot of um pressure from the soil in the overburden. How how are they gonna keep it from uh, collapsing? How are they gonna keep the hole open? So I don't know the answer to this. No, but this is, is the known process that they're yeah, doing. Yeah, well, this is not. I, I, and, and I'm not a civil engineer. Yeah. But I mean, well, don't, I'm not either. But. but I mean, they do have, and don't ask me where I've seen them, but you know, like metal structure that has supports for dropping in between to keep things apart. At, you know, whatever the standard depth, width of whatever they're a dig would be or something like that. So I would presume it's that way, but I didn't even think of. Well, I'm just going to say that the other thing about that is, is that that is why they are talking about trying to get a good design in it together before they and get the RFP out for their contractor, because the contractors have different technologies based on what right. they're doing. Right. So I think that's a move point at this point that that's going to be the 95 percent of the time okay i'll um, i'll agree to that um one of the comment i had um one of the possibilities that they're using for backfill is uh soil cement and bentonite and this this is just uh from personal experience um uh, when i worked in the environmental field and i had to go out and sample a well uh, maybe a well that hadn't been open in five or 10 years. And uh, first thing you do is when you pop up the, the well cap to sample the well, you see you see bentonite, which is used as a sealant. Uh, and the bentonite is all deteriorated and cracked. So um, typically what happens is the, the bentonite is prone to desiccate and dry out and crack um, above the water table. So um, they're going to use bentonite as a backfill material. Um, how are they going to deal with the with the uh, desiccation? And that is not a question about how they will deal with it during the construction. That is a question about how they deal with the it after long term design. Yeah, long term yeah. design. So those were the only two comments that I had about it. Okay. And does it say they're using the bentonite in this document? Um, it says that uh, there's the possibility of the bentonite cement soil or something called uh, plastic cement, uh, which I'm not sure what that is, actually. So those are the two options. So is that a reason we want to encourage them to use? Plastic cement? Uh, I, I don't know what plastic cement is, to be honest with you. I think it's I think it's it's a question we have that we like an answer. I mean, the answer and depending on their answer, uh, I have no opinion one way or the other at this point. But depending on how their answer is, it doesn't make sense to us more explanation, or if it makes sense to us, we have no issues with that. And, I don't plastic cement. I don't know. Really. Yeah, I don't know what it is either. Okay, so this was this is basically our discussion of the cement materials, and our concern is that bentonite can dry out and trap and and crack when it's dead oh, above the water, above the water table. table. Yeah, and so how are they going to deal with that desiccation problem? Yeah, because and is that not... why they're thinking about? Plastic cement and what is plastic cement? Is it any better? And it, are there 
is there evidence of it being hardy over time? Yeah, that's what we're, we're, we're talking about is the hardiness of it, how long it's going to last, longevity. Um, anybody have a concern about uh, how uh, how much of and or how how much the um, uh, the wall is going to be keyed into bedrock versus um, till? Anybody have a concern about that? Well, their argument was that the till was pretty impervious. It seems that way. Um, the bedrock is kind of hard to tell. Uh, but 30 years ago, they were making the argument, the company was making the argument that the bedrock was impervious. <laughs> so, and clearly it's gotten out of the bedrock. So. It, this, is, this is one of the surprises, Dottie, to this design was, is that originally the wall around the old holding basin material, which is uranium that mm -hmm. is sitting on top of the bedrock, deep down underneath the old holding basin, and is a threat to the water table. Mm -hmm. And so in order to prevent it from getting into the water and then spreading off the site, which it's doing slowly, and and they're still, they're gonna they're gonna do a belt and suspender sort of thing. They're going to wrap it in a cement sarcophagus, basically, all the way down to the bedrock, maybe into the bedrock, and they're gonna put a cap over the top of it. But they're also gonna put and they're probably doing that shortly. They're going to put soil amendments all the way down into it. They're basically going to frack it full of um, divalent iron. Is that the one that they've finally decided on? Yeah, divalent and iron. And that, that makes the uranium there insoluble and less likely to get into the water. So in theory, they could get away with doing either of those things. I think when when this was first designed, our committee actually recommended they turn the whole thing into cement and get as much of the soil out of there as they could. And they felt that was impractical and and unnecessary because this would would be a, enough. Um, can, I, can I ask you a quick question? Where has yeah. where has um, any leaking been detected? Um, in which direction around that holding basin? So from the holding basin, the um, the plume that comes from the holding basin mm -hmm. that has uranium in it, mm -hmm. that originally had nitrates in it, those nitrates in the 90s went from the holding basin under the buildings, under the um, parking lot, under Route 62, and to the river. Oh, okay. And so it reached the Asaba. The nitrates reached the river. Yep. The uranium hasn't been detected in the acibet yet. It's slower mm -hmm. moving. Yep. Um, uranium is a lot like lead when it comes to the properties of it moving in the water. Okay. So if you can think, I mean, it's radioactive, but it's also just um, a metal like lead that moves mm -hmm. kind of similarly. You have the right pH, you have the right conditions. It will dissolve and it will move in the water table. Um, okay. But it moves much slower than... Um, than something sol very soluble like nitrates. Okay, thank uh, you. Or fertilizer. Yep. Um, you know, the fertilizer would move much much faster if that's uh, if you think about it that way. Okay. So um, the plume is still consistent with what the nitrate plume did years ago. Okay. There is also they, they also used um, organics at the site solvents. Mm -hmm. um, Basically, breakdown products of toluene are in a plume that are going towards the river, under the river, towards um, the Acton drinking water wells on the other side of the river. Oh, and okay. So, in addition to that, there is a, another solvent that was identified after the rod was written, 1,4-dioxane, and that is being pumped and treated. And the treatment for that actually treats the toluene breakdown products too. And so the drinking water, once the holding basin protection is in, and there'll be additional amendments to prevent in the soil, fracked into the soil down gradient, basically where the parking lots are mm -hmm. of that, of the holding basin that will also prevent uranium from heading towards the river. Mm -hmm. 
And there's the pump and treat system that's going to remove the organics. Some of those are volatile organics, the toluene breakdown products. And then the, um, the one four dioxane is not so volatile and may take longer. In theory, the uranium sequestration is, makes the, the water on the site drinkable for um, as far as the uranium is concerned, but the organics have, have both a problem with not being drinking water safe. So there'll be a institutional control that says that you can't drink water on the site until that remediation is done which is basically forever because they're probably going to pump and treat for a hundred years. So they were thinking wow. originally okay. it's going to be about 40 years, but there's, they found some stuff in the bedrock that's slower coming out because things move slower through the bedrock. So, so that's a slow process that's going to be there. So that's something that Concord is going to have to enforce is making sure that nobody puts drinking water wells there. Interesting. Okay, thank you for the background on okay. that. Then the other health aspect of the organics is that the volatile organics that are still there can rise up through the um, the dirt and can end up in your basement like radon does. And you need a system to prevent that vapor intrusion, which are systems just like radon systems to basically um, prevent the air from coming up underneath and, and circulating into your house. And so that vapor intrusion barrier is another institutional control that any building that's on the plume is going to have to, to um, if they have a vapor it, intrusion. If they need it. If they need it. But, and that's something that the there'll be escrow funds to pay for. Again, yep, thank you again for the background. And that is really something when thinking of Acton's involvement. Uh, I didn't yeah. realize that, that that's, of yeah. course, an issue. Yeah, there's a pump and treat building on the site that's over next to the Minuteman Arc um, area that was cleaned up, that area that, that backs up to, to that side. So as you come in the driveway, there's a mm -hmm. pump and treat building on your right. Um, okay. And there's pump and treat buildings on the other side of the river. As a tree building on the other side of the river that that treats it closer to Akin. And right now that's showing that it is protective of Akin's drinking water. Okay. Thanks. So, um, so the 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 discussion that we're having now is that this wall around the holding basin that was always presented to us as being something that went all the way down to the bedrock and would be keyed into the bedrock so that nothing could get out. They are in fact suggesting that about two thirds of the length of that wall around is only going to go to the, down to the till level, which is sort of this crumbly rock area right above the bedrock and not actually get keyed all the way into the, into the bedrock. EPA is in fact said they are comfortable with that idea because they feel that the, they, they see the testing of the, of the movement of uranium through this till area, and they say that it's just not porous enough for them to worry about. But it is a change. And so that's why we're nervous about it. And there have been a lot of changes to this holding basin design. Originally, they were going to put in a cap and put 10 feet of soil on top of the cap. But in fact, they filled with soil and they're gonna put a cap on that is only three feet, and with only three feet of soil on top of it. So, there have been a, a few changes that, and and we're reviewing this very early design that is a draft before EPA review. So they want our, our feedback on it now, um, but it's not a public document to review. So. Um, Can I ask, is it a financial issue? Is it less expensive not to go down to the bedrock, but instead uh, stop short of the bedrock? That That's yep. part of it, sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, and and the only reason they're not doing it only into the till all the way around is because in some areas the till is less than 10 feet thick and they need it to be a certain thickness in order to, to key into the till. Mm -hmm. So that, that it's actually really hard to dig into bedrock 100 feet below the surface, which mm -hmm. is what we're talking about doing at 80 feet. Yeah. So. 
So the question is whether we want to actually comment on this again, because we have commented on it before and say that we, we're still concerned that we'd like to see a belt and suspenders approach of keying into the till or not, a uh, keying into the bedrock. Or... Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think, I think they, they pretty much got uh, the line of the wall here. And, and what we have on this, on this sheet shows the, uh, uh, the line of the wall there. I, I think that that's pretty much set in your mind. Can you show that to Yeah. Yeah. So, so, the, so there's a line of the wall right here. Okay. So can you put that in front of your camera? So well, actually it's actually when it's, it's actually that camera's being used. So if you just, Oh, um, so the, I, I don't know if you guys, I can, from what I'm seeing, I don't know if you guys can even see what I'm showing, holding up. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, it, it's so hard there's to see. two parts of this document. The top part is the top, the top plan view, a top view of where the wall is going to go around the holding basin that exists now. And the bottom part is an unrolled side view of right. the the dirt it along that wall. Stretch the, the wall out. So the, the red at the bottom is the um, the bedrock and the orange layer right above it is the till layer. And can can I ask is, is that slide number twenty seven or twenty six on um um the PowerPoint um, uh, oh the PowerPoint that what one second let me from the August twenty seventh the one that Pam sent out I'm not I'm sure that is in, in, yeah. in the PowerPoint. This is the RDRA update. Yeah, August seventh. I wasn't yeah. sure. Thank you for looking that over. Yes, it, there it is. It, yep. yep, it is. Okay, that's so, what I thought. That yeah, was I, I found that a very in that was a very informative document. That PowerPoint deck. So, do you that do you yep. do you have the copy of the sixty percent document? I don't have a copy of it. I have a link to view it online. I've got it. I've got it right. Actually, I've got it right here. So, well, I I don't. I'm not connected, but I I do have a copy of my computer, so I can. If you don't have it, we can send it to her. her okay. to, to get to. to get, we you can get her on a list so that. Yeah. PA right. Will but send this is. So, yeah. yeah. So. Okay. So, Len, you think it's not worth arguing about at this point? Um. At this point, because uh, we don't know all the facts, we don't, we don't know uh, how they're going to do this. They, they don't even have a general idea. They've got to talk to to contractors about how they're going to do this. We, you know, when they come out with their with their RFP, um, you know, we should know we should know a lot more. We can still uh, everything I talked yeah talked about and uh, the drying of the, out of the bed tonight. You know, that they can be so drying I'm sure that they already know that anyway. And they're thinking about it, so it, it just I don't know. I think it's redundant if we actually. You don't think we, just, we should mention? Well, it's again. probably not worth it. No, well, no. I, I, I'm going to respectfully disagree. I think it, you know we can. It shows that we're that we're looking at this stuff, and this we still have some con potential concerns related to several items, including. And when I was looking at that, that part as we're going through this, you know. And th section 3.2.2.1.4 mixed design, it talks about the two types of backfill. You know, we don't think we have enough, we still have concerns about raising that this, the material above the water level, you know, if it dries out, we, we're not educated enough related to the plastic con concrete at this point in time to comment on it right. thoroughly. Uh, we we appreciate the material they you know regarding the difference between the till and stuff like that and it's one area that we will continue to monitor. I mean it's okay. If so, how about the cap design? Do we have any comments on the cap design? Um, I don't have any comments on the cap design. I I think it's yeah. I have a question. Yeah. Um, I think it was a while ago we raised the point that it would be nice to have a way to sample the material 
in the holding basin was time. Mm -hmm. You wonder if it's staying the same or moving around. Isn't that, <laughs> they're going to do that anyway, I think, aren't they? They're going to test inside the holding basin? I believe so, yeah. Uh, I they... can't imagine they are no. ever going to test inside the mm -hmm. holding basin. Well, well, they're going to, they're going to have a lot of wells connected with injecting the iron. Yeah. It's just like, is there like five wells they, they plan to keep active? Inside uh, the holding basin. I believe so, yeah. Yeah. So they would not fill five of the holes. So it would not it close out, yeah, five of them. Yeah, there's going to be, yeah. I believe that's what they're going to do. So how, where will those come up that they will not pierce the cap? Well, they might be something like this. Uh, they might be... Uh, Fit in under something under this is probably the a surface that's the flat boundary surface. Boundary marker. Yeah. yeah. What's wrong is that? Yeah. This one right here. So there's probably going to be something like that where they were. Uh, it's a flush mount well. What page is that? What page is that? Be something. No, I'm just she. Five hundred five hundred two. Be five hundred two. So you think so that there'll think be something flush mount on the top gonna, of the well, I think it's going to be. It's going to have to be flush mount. Yeah, yeah. It's going to have to be flush mount so it won't get destroyed. I, I noticed too that but, the camp isn't level. I've always yeah. thought of it as a level surface, but it's not. It's, uh, well, you need water and, to run off of it. Yeah. Well, that so there's the uh, the two plateaus. Uh, well, it's not going to be level here. across. It's going to be, it's going to slope downward. Right. Right. But he's saying there's going to be two height levels on it. Yeah, that's yeah. right. As well, not just each, each one. Not just each the slope. probably slope downward a bit. Yeah. Let me see if I may have a diagram of that. No, maybe not. Uh, yeah. Do we have to worry about technically yeah. stuff running off into the, um, into the web, into the sphagnum bog? Yeah, we should because it all should be should be rainwater. Yeah, okay. it, it's no designed. It's right. not designed not to not to infiltrate. Right. Which is the other reason is if it doesn't infiltrate, how are you going to keep the uh, the bed night hydrated? Right. Um, it it would be nice, I think, uh, just for consistency's sake, if we continue to to put together comments, even even. A small number of comments, maybe paragraph or so, just just to, to let them know that uh, that we're looking at the material. So the things that I have on the list right now is the questions about the bentonite yeah. and, and what is plastic cement and how are they going to be making that hardy over time, yeah. especially with with no ground. And I think we should put in the the idea about uh, how we can how are they going to keep the wall from collapsing at depth with all that. Uh, Hydrostatic pressure behind it. We should if we're going to what, submit comments. What hydrostatic that, pressure right? from the inside? No, from from the from the the, the wall from the outside. Yeah, yeah. But the wall is you know, pressure on both sides of it. Well, the well the, the the thing is, it's going to be before the wall goes in. What's going to uh, yeah. hold that? What's going to hold that uh, that uh, trench open? Basically, I I, 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 I think that's. Them. Done with engineering. That... You don't want to include that question. I, yeah, no, I think... no, no, no. There's two questions there. I thought one was what's going to hold the trench open. What's during... going to hold the trench open? That's, yeah, that's we're going to be looking for that in the 95 percent design. It's got a slurry of some sort in it, right? Before the slurry goes in. Yeah. Well, there's. I'm sorry, it's, well, it's but, but the other question is: Were you having one. concerns that the the structure around the dirt is going to collapse inward after it's built because of more water pressure no, outside. No, it, no, it would okay. be before. before. It would, I would just worry about collapsing into the hole uh, because there's, there's so much, you know, it, it, first of all, you've got a lot of overburden and uh, that overburden is pressing down uh, and it's going to tend to, uh, to put a lot of uh, pressure on the, so, on the side walls. So I'll have to say that 
Yeah, that might happen. And if that happens, they have to dig. Wait a second. Wait. Okay. Now, there's a there's a slurry that falls the walls apart, and then, then there's some pretty parts that pops in under. What did Nick just say? No, it, that was me. I was trying to so I can pull this drawing up. I'm trying to see if I can pull it up to show people as I'm going, but it was reverbing. So that was my. Ah, okay. That was not Nick. That was and but Nick is part of the meeting now, right? Nick is on the meeting. Yet. Thank you, Nick. So, um, okay, so so my question is, what if it does? What if the trench collapses while they're building it? Then they just dig again, <laughs> right? I mean, that's the that's. Is well, that is that, a is that, is that what their for us? that what their plan is? Is they're gonna they're gonna dig again? I just I'm curious as as to how they're thinking about it now. You know what what this is, this is what the contractor is going to do. And, this is and part, part of part of what the contractor is going to do. Exactly. You know there the there are state laws about trenches more than three feet deep that that have that there are requirements and what have to be done. So, I mean, as long as they're conforming to the to the regulations, it, it's not our province, is it, to really be concerned about it. There are a whole bunch of uh, because there were some deaths with trenches of several years ago. The state passed some laws, regulations about what a contractor has to do when they're digging a trench over three feet deep. Yeah, I don't think it's. I, I you know because I, I don't think it's a question, it's a question we need to ask. Okay, so, all right. Okay, so we want to make comments about we're concerned about the bentonite drying out. Yeah, and we don't know what plastic cement is, how are they going to deal with desiccation over the water table, and and how do we know that plastic cement is hardy over time? And we're talking about, we want to mention again that we're paying attention to keying the sidewalk into the bedrock, because that's still an issue for us. And we really want to see the the 95 that in the 95% design, and we're following that. And we're, we're interested in knowing about how they're going to deal with having five wells remaining active in the holding basin. Is that going to pierce the cap? Where will that be acceptable from the top? Yeah, that would be good. So those are the three common areas that we have that we want to get back to Kara. Was there anything else? Um, that's actually more than I had. Okay. So uh, I don't have anything else to go along with that. Nick, did you manage? Did you get a copy, a link to this document originally? Which there was. Um, this was the whole. You're talking about the one that was in August distribution because I tried yeah. reading it and it wouldn't let me in. Okay. It was dated. It's dated July 24th, I think, isn't it? July 24th. It's one that, that uh, Kara sent out, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that and hasn't. Was... So, so that we have. Um, it, there really wasn't anything unexpected in this document, right? It was it was a rehash of what they've already done, right? So, and they just presented it again, yeah, because they haven't gone out and and do, actually do what they need to do, which is the, which is select and talk to a contractor, right? And, and for those online, I just the p second page that um, Len was showing, uh, I just shared that page onto the screen, hopefully. Uh, which is showing the going, the wall going down to the bedrock in one in one figure, and then just into the till in the second. So, I mean, if DPA is comfortable with that, with with the with the wall being keyed into into a till, um, I, I I don't think it's a bad idea. Because you have you contact don't... with Kevin, the the eat the crew um, technical advisor. I, I actually I actually haven't talked to Kevin. Because I was under the impression he was comfortable with this too, but that 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 is good science. He is the right kind of engineer, or, the, or he has the right kind of engineers. To the right. Well, if it's keyed into into um, till, um, there tends to be less uh, heterogeneity as far as where the fractures are, yeah. and so um, it's probably less of a concern uh, if you know. You know what you're what you're drilling into. If you go deep in the in the bedrock. Uh, you know you could 
wind up with with uh, unexpected fractures. Okay. Um, so I, I don't, uh, you know, I think that's fine. And, okay. and from what I've seen, the hydraulic conductivity values are similar. So do we want to say we're okay with them digging into till? Linking it to the, the, that was a concern before, but we're comfortable with it now? Well, I, I don't think we have enough information. I mean, we don't know what okay. the characteristics of the till are. As I understand it, till is compacted. It's not like moraine. It's just, right. it's just loose on the surface. So, I mean, the, the characterization of that, you'd have to have the characterization of the till to make a competent comment, I think. Is the characterization of the till in there? In that document? I don't know where seeing it, but that's um, it, it might it might be under one of the uh, PDIs they've done. They've done about four PDIs, four or five PDIs. Okay. Uh, I'm I not think sure. It, I think I, I think it would be valid to request uh, ask them where the character where the till is characterized, and or, or something along those lines. How what what characterization they're basing that on? I have to look it up in Wikipedia and see what it was in English. And the definition was there was material of all sizes. Uh, okay. <laughs> just whatever the glacier scraped up. Okay, so we don't think that, up, that it's in there somewhere. I I, I'm not saying I didn't. Yeah. We, we, that, so I, I have mean, that's that's pretty much it. It's up to I have a document on. online. I don't have right, the glacier. So, oh, on a <laughs> description. I'm not sure how. I can, well, let me see if I can search for it. Well, yeah, but the problem is if you type in the word till, you're going to get, you know, 140, 140 space till space. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of that stuff is not. No, the word till is used a lot. That's okay. okay. Yeah, sure. And a lot of that's probably not, not applicable to the site either. Okay, it should be the section. One second. Section execution 3.1 K says, and I'm just pulling something out here, not monitoring evaluation of panel installation at, this, at any stage will be made by the engineer. The engineer will measure the depth to the top of the glacial till, the bottom of the glacial till, top of the bedrock, and the bottom of the key and as applicable. So, I mean, that, that sounds like an execution part. They're going to be doing those measurements. So, okay. The, I, the, other, the other thing is that there's a, there's a lot of specifications there, uh, and I'm wondering, um, you know, who who on the management side is going to be overseeing these contractors to make sure that they're sticking with the specifications? Are they going to have somebody on site on a regular basis? And if so, who? EPA generally has somebody, and DEP also well, has somebody. Who I don't. I don't think it's. This. I don't think it's EPA or D, DEP. I think that they're relying on um, somebody in the employee of the Maximus, mm -hmm. whether that be uh, a Haley and Aldrich person. But I, I'm curious. I'd like to know who's who's going to be watching the watchers. This that might be something we want to ask too. There's only can be so many levels of watchers. Well, and I don't know. You know, at some point you do have to trust that. Yeah. Oh, I'm just yeah. I, I, I yeah. as as a watcher of a watcher for, in my other job. I mean, trust me, those people don't. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. And then uh, there was a another thing which I uh, we haven't really talked about uh, during the it was it's excavation. And we, we didn't really discuss it in AOA 8 and AOA 9, but uh, it's the, uh, if um, an alarm is triggered because of uh, excess dust in the air, um, the uh, specifications say the contractor has to uh, respond within five minutes of, of getting, but who, who's going to, who's going to tell them? Who's going to tell them that there's, oh, Mr. Contractor, we got to, we have a, uh, an exceedance of the everything that's being done at this site is being done by contractors. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's not, it's all contractors over contractors over contractors. And <laughs> that's, I, I think that, that knowing the fine details of who's, so we, we get a, who's we get enforcing know who's, the yeah. dust monitor response yeah. so, is like that, that's a real basic one. 
it's one of the windiest places in Concord. It's like as windy as the top of the Nurse Knack Hill, you know? And that was actually a major problem when they were removing the, the um, structures on top of the building that were the air conditioning ducts and all that stuff yeah. that had to be removed because that was stuff that, that was really, really contaminated and the, you know, the wind would go up and they right. ended up, they were, they were working half the days because of wind. So uh, I think we can trust them to follow the wind restriction. Well, I, I, feel uh, like, I don't think know, that's who's, a... Who's, uh, who's, who's, who's keeping an eye on them? That's all. Maybe, yeah, maybe just making sure. It's a there. little... Two of these. Yeah. I think that's so, not a... Okay. I don't know. So, so are we... Pam, do you have sufficient... I have sufficient notes for, okay. for minutes. Do you want me to write this letter to... Okay. How do we want to... Uh, I can. I don't have. I was scribbling, but I wasn't as detailed as you were doing. Do you want to? If you could, I will. I will try to get the minutes done by tomorrow, and, and then and we can I, come back yeah. with stuff. And what was? I apologize. I, I'm so the, so there, pages. When did we say we had to have this one in by? This is it, soon. This yeah. Is, it was, uh, this is uh, yes. Is the twenty seventh? Uh, okay. I think so twenty seventh. But so Monday is an okay by Monday is an okay. Day. Is next Friday the twenty next Friday the Monday 27th. would be a fine time. So yeah. Yeah. so do you want to just it'd be the twenty seventh review it one more time now? Should, so, uh, because we're only talking about three things. So that we're we're at we're we're questioning. Well if point. you don't mind just create okay. the thing and then shoot it to me and then I'll chop it and we'll we'll, we'll go back and then we can shoot it. So I think it's yeah. Concurrence on what we said at the meeting, I think we, we can share with everybody in this group, correct? Right. So, yeah, we have time for a write up and then one quick review, I think. Yeah. Okay. So, before it goes out. So, okay. Yeah. And I will check and see how many wells, in fact, that they are they're, they are going to leave uh, intact on the okay. holding days. <laughs> just because it, cause they are going to want to sample that, that water. There's, there is water in there. So, I have to go. I missed that part. So, I don't to. Huh? No, I don't. I missed that. What he's saying about uh, the sampling. I have to go back and review. Yeah, I mean, I, no, I, I don't. I don't disagree with what you're saying. I'm just right. You know, I mean, so. and that's part of what'll tell them whether right, the so. uh, solution is working or not. If okay. there's uranium in the in the water, then the solution is not working. So, if you want a case where there's no uranium in the water. Yeah, the but sample. they don't know if the uranium. There's no uranium in the water because the after the the iron is sequestering it properly and they didn't need well, the wall at all, or whether it's the wall that's preventing right, it right. and the iron's not doing its job at all. Yeah, it's so, all probably working together. So yeah. Okay. Um didn't I test this uh in connection with the second uh, pumping station they were gonna build to protect the Acton wells. Oh yeah, they, 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 they do. They, they did pump something into the ground to. They have it. done so. So the next document that we're talking about is is about the sequestration of uranium. Yeah, so I, I don't think that we're going to be. I don't think we're going to have too many comments about that one because we haven't so far on the previous documents, and this is a revised version. Too. Yeah. So this is. Uh, Probably a revision of a revision. So that raises the question that is due on the 15th of October. Our next scheduled meeting was supposed to be on the 18th of October. I think we should include a note to Kara saying that uh, she needs to to move the deadlines back a little bit. Give us a chance to, to you know, meet. They want this is a revision. I'm not sure why they're doing this revision. But they wanted to be pumping this, doing this work right now. I think we ought to try to look at it and say, if we don't have any comments, no, we don't no, have any comments. We, we, we didn't have any comments on the last one. Okay. The the last ISS. Uh, we just there was nothing for us to comment on. So, so we probably are not going to have if it's just minor well, corrections based just, on what EPA yeah. says. It's probably not going to be. 
anything uh, new, you know, not, nothing thunderous or anything like we that. We don't have a lot of experience with this anyway. I mean, That's right. you have experience with fracking? Sure. And I don't have, you know, I'm I'm actually going to say this is one we should, maybe we should just say, we don't have any comments on this, except to say we want to, yeah, you know, support anything EPA. So, so the question is procedurally: Do we all want to take a look at it near future, and then if somebody wants to have has any comments or wants to raise it, we schedule a meeting to discuss? It. I'm just trying to figure out timing wise. If, if we need to schedule a meeting, maybe maybe they, each one of us can each one of us has it, so maybe we can we all review it and then uh, send our comments to either Pam or to you, Ray. Um, and then you can put them into a, an email right, or I a just, document. Yeah, I'm just you know, rather rather than meet and discuss it in person like we're doing I don't, now. I don't think. In other words, I actually think that unless we have something major to say about it, we're not going to say anything. Yeah, we shouldn't say anything, and we okay. should get that information to EPA as soon okay. as possible. So, so, are you suggesting you'd really like to do a review of it? I'd like to take a look at it. Yeah, for okay. sure. So, can you get? A uh, uh, yes or no, I'm going to have comments back to Ray by next week. Uh, so when does it do? It's due the 15th. It's due the 15th. And uh, and today is, so that gives us But he needs a week, week to schedule a meeting. Wait, well, yeah. I need, a, one, I need a week to schedule a meeting. Second of all, the week before that, I know I'm, I could do a meeting remotely from the 11th, but likewise, I have jury duty that week too, Terry. So, uh, but yeah, we need a week to schedule a meeting. So, therefore, um, I think by the end of next, by the by next Thursday, we need to know if yes or no, if we want to have a meeting so we can schedule a meeting. Um, that, Nick and Dottie, do you have a copy of this that was sent out? Or it was Kara it? sent out a link to it like just a couple of Wednesday. Days ago. I'm sorry, when did she, send she sent it Wednesday, I believe. It was sent on the 18th. It's a link just like the one that you couldn't read for the yeah, holding basin just, design. And this is see. the holding basin ISS. Yeah, let me just see if I can. I think I tried that one, but let me try it again. Okay. And Dottie sure, certainly wouldn't have it because yeah. she's not on Kara's yeah. list. So. Yeah, so no, I don't, I don't have it. I looked so, on their own website um, to to draw uh, that August seventh PowerPoint. Right, and this one this one will not be on any website because it's a document that has not been publicly released by the EPA, and um, we are getting advanced copies of it. So I don't remember actually how big it is. I'll send Dottie. I will send um, the the Kara the your email to add to the list. Thank you for doing that. Um, but I can tell you that Kara's out of town this weekend. You're probably not going to get this document in time for you to be one of the ones that reviews it. What this document is, is this document is the, the design for basically fracking the iron into the the um the wells the, well into the, the holding basin in order the to formation. sure to um to, to spread out this iron so that it makes the uranium that's there insoluble. And that'll be done inside the holding basin before they build the wall around it because fracking can break the wall. <laughs> so, oh boy, okay. So they wanna do the fracking first and they wanna do that this fall. And then hopefully in the spring, they will start building their wall. Or so can, the just, can I ask, um, they're, they're fracking iron into the holding basin? Right. Uh, to do what to the uranium? They're making it insoluble so that it won't okay. dissolve in the water. It'll okay. stay right where it is. Yep. And then they're going to be putting a wall around it that's going to prevent water from getting to it that should also prevent it from getting into the water. Okay. <laughs> and the cap on top, which prevents the water from getting into it from above. Yep. So. I, I remember looking at that. I thought the design was very well done. I mean, they yeah. got pipes going down in the well. They had pipes coming off at right angles mm -hmm. and they, they've got the range so that they said well so they said they have an idea of how far the tracking can extend to the pipes and that things have been the geometry's been arranged so that, that covers 
the whole area. All uh, the volume of the whole thing, basically. Yeah, and plus outside it, too. Well, they're going to be doing this also down gradient, but yeah. they don't. Have, they can do that after they've built the holding basin and they've removed the foundations and they've removed the parking lots and yeah. And like we that. can and by that time we'll, we'll know if it works or not. Yeah. I also keep wondering if once they do this, there's not going to be enough uranium down gradient for them to have to do the fracking down down gradient either. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah. I think that so, was a hope. Okay, so. So okay, so whether I can get um, this, this is the twentieth. Um, I can I can get you need it by next week. Uh, uh, just a statement of whether I'm going to have any. We're just looking for like by next Thursday. Do we need to have a meeting or not? That's basically all right. So all right, you know. And again, okay. little things we're not going to worry about. But yeah. if there, we if we have real comments about what's going on, we, so, we should. Yeah, I know we have it in the past. Few yeah, ones, so the ISS reports. reports. So, uh, it, and we'll see if we can get a copy to next yeah, and about about it. Material. Yeah, but it's really unlikely that we can, is what I'm saying, because because I know that Kara's got a message on her machine. Well, yeah, but I, she's out of town right. for the weekend. Yeah, so. so. What were you saying? You wonder what's the half life of the compound that the, the double bill on fire form is. Yeah. How long? 200 years. I think was the last. Yeah. Hopefully, the last 200 years. So, if we don't need to meet about that, we send in our comments for the other thing. We yep. don't have anything else pending. Do we need to have an October meeting at all? I, I think not, but at this point, why don't we leave it on the schedule and we can right, we can cancel it more, more quickly than we need to. Yeah. So. Is there any other new matters? Oh, you wanted information about the board? Yeah, well, I, I, I figured that was number four on the, on the yeah. thing, if that's so. Okay, we've I believe we finished discussing all new items, so we're going to move to report on the advisory committee. So I'm the lead. I'm now actually a member of the advisory committee because Carrie Flood, who was on the committee, passed away. She was. Uh, she was still. On the she committee. did. She was on the committee when she. Uh, she had resigned a week or two before. Okay. So that she passed away, but she. Um, Carrie worked at StarMet for 25 years and. Um, was part of a study because she had had um, spots on her lungs that were and was treated with radiation therapy a few years ago and they came back with a vengeance this summer um, but i also discovered at her um at one of the family get-togethers that she um she'd actually been a smoker too so she didn't actually necessarily blame her for issues on starmat but um uh, but she's someone who worked for the town um she was on the select board back when the holding basin was being removed. She was on um, various committees for schools and Hanscom and various other committees for the town. She was the assistant town moderator for years and years. Mm -hmm. And she also volunteered at um, Minuteman Arc and worked at Drumlin Farm and Emerson wow. Umbrella and at a bank for a while. <laughs> And she's she was living in the house she grew up in in Concord when she um, passed away. So, um, so anyway, so that that's so I'm actually on the advisory committee. I'm not just the liaison anymore. Um, we are working on a report. We have done a straw poll, and we are going to be recommending to the town that the town move forward with acquisition of the site um, soon, and not wait until after it's cleaned up, but get the lawyers working on it to see if they can come up with the the lien resolution and the um, liability protections that we would like from that. So um, we're going to be voting on wording of a report of a recommendation sometime soon. And we're going to be we're writing our report, which is challenging. Are you, are you uh, recommending a use for it? No, you're not. Um, 
you feel like that's too complicated right now because of the um the there's MCI Concord is, yeah. is potentially available for some of the uses that you might think about putting there. Um, Peabody School is also something that's going to be available as a site for the town. Um, there's been a bunch of new affordable housing units that are coming online, both the development there at um, along Forest Ridge Road at the Row Club. There's going to be a development back there literally backs up to the site. It's on the same kind of zoning as this site. So, but but um, that's, they're just other uses. And then, then the other thing is potentially um, the DPW would like to put the facilities that are at Kai's Road over at the old StarMet site, because then that area, which is very close to the Mill Pond and uh, Mill, Mill Brook there, um is or could be could be turned into housing that would be close to town for people, which is much better than putting housing in Starnet, for instance. So so there are some there are a whole lot of possibilities and the town really needs to do integrated planning about these before they before we, we actually say, well this is what you should do and this is what you shouldn't. There are certain obvious things about the site. You know, having town trails extend around the sides of the um, the sphagnum and bog because they they're practically linked to the town trails that are already there. The people that break into the site are are not terrorists; they're people, they're bird watchers. Uh, you know, so um, so it's kind of that that's an obvious thing to put there to put a viewing platform so people don't actually get try to get into the bog is something that that makes sense. Um, the site is also really well located to put a battery facility. Um, basically, where the pump and treat building is there that backs up to Minutemen Arc. There's um, there's across the street there are there's a big solar field that the town has, and then there's a, um, a transformer station, electrical substation there at the end of Forest Ridge Road. So functionally, this is almost on the line between those. It's close, fairly close to solar there, and it would be close to any solar that was put at the site. So having battery storage for solar power um, that, that right now is being lost because when it's sunny, we make more than we need to is an obvious use for the site. Um, also having this be some kind of transportation stop on the way into town or the cross connect, which is a, a public transportation that that Maynard and Acton are participating in. Um, so they're they're definitely going to be cross connect buses that go down Main Street towards the train station and to like Emerson Hospital and things like that. And having there being uh, there being a stop there along the way where people can hop on and off the buses would make sense for the community that's back there. So those things are obviously well well suited to this particular site as opposed to any other sites in in town and and the rest it, there's a lot of possibilities um so there was a site visit i was not in attendance at the site visit but i understand the entire select board was and a couple of members of the finance committee and dpw were also and that it was um, that Bruce did a great job, sort of giving a real uh, up-to-date review of the site, and that that was um, uh, well received by the select board. And my understanding from the task force committee members that went was that the select board showed great interest in action and finance and and. Uh, DPW showed really great interest in all the possibilities for the site and how well located it was for doing things. So that was a good sign because the select board has been kind of negative about why should we make a decision? Why do we want to think about this? You know, would, would it be that beneficial? Um, was the was there also the the presentation with the slides? We discussed that at the last meeting, didn't we? Um, or has that happened since then? I mean, right, no, the August 7th community update, that was, 
that was on that we discussed that last time. Yeah, so, so it, it's just you had posted them or got them posted. So, so what I did was I it I'm someone who prints out meeting packets and emails out the meeting packet and the slide decks that come from these community updates are big. They're like 10 megapiece or sometimes bigger than that. And so um, I set up with Ebony, there's actually a list of the community update slides now posted on, on our website so that we, you can just click on them to look at them. And so that's how Dottie could see that. Um, and then the meeting packet, I try to include any correspondence we've had to during the previous time to in the meeting packet because those are also posted online and that gives someone a way to look back and see what correspondence the committee put out. Um, so was there anything else? Anybody so I, I don't know if Terry wants to comment on the select board's visit. I don't. I oh, okay, Terry, we're up to public comment, aren't we? Yeah, but. Yes, thank you. Um, it was a wonderful visit. Um, all the other four members had not been to the site and actually going there makes a huge amount of difference as I found out a couple of years ago when I first went. And um, as Pam said, the task force is about ready to give their recommendation to the select board. And now they will have a really good frame of reference when people are talking about area A, the holding basin, the sphagnum bog. Now they're gonna know they've seen it all. It's gonna be a huge help. Um, if it's public comment, time. I also had some comments. I had my hand up before. Oh, um, I apologize. So the, 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 just the logistics on this end, I generally am looking at the people here, so I don't always see the screen, and I don't know how long Nick had was in the waiting thing before he buzzed <laughs> Pam to a lot of men, so uh, I apologize. Oh, no, no problem. Okay, so getting back to your review of the documents. First of all, I really appreciate all the thoroughness that you, all the time that you people are putting in. You're behind the scenes, the town is not seeing this. They're going to see the task force come in with all their recommendations, but that task force is relying heavily on your oversight at this committee. And that thoroughness that you're putting in is essential. And um, I just can't emphasize enough how you guys are like the unsung heroes of all of this project. And please do not hesitate if you have any concerns whatsoever. I think I heard, for example, Len or someone say near the beginning of the meeting, well, we're not going to get what we want. And, and I didn't follow what it was about, whether it was the um how deep that wall goes into the um cap or or whatever but i guess we can't always get what we want but if you have a major concern about health and safety um that in order to save money they've made a decision that you're not comfortable with please speak up because we're about to move forward in a very major way and um, I guess, what is the procedure anyway, if you guys are not satisfied with, and you think something is not um, being done to the standard that you think it should be? What's we the said problem? our CPA. If you meant that, that we, we had a strong comment that we felt EP EPA really was not um, justified in ignoring or in or had not satisfactorily responded and we went, we had an actual health and safety concern, we would bring that, we would escalate that up the chain very quickly. You would know about it. Good. We okay. are not shy. Right, but exactly. So don't hesitate. I heard you know, a few discussions today about, well, should we 
um, remind them that we're concerned about this. We've already reminded them. Um, yes, you know, make sure you're on record. Make sure you remind them. Um, I think we never want to go back 20 years from now and and have regrets. Um, we're, so we're about to move forward in a very major way. And you guys are um, really the only ones who know about the health and safety. The task force is working on the legal and the political and the reuse and not um, being watchdogs. So um, please keep doing what you're doing and, and know that you're really appreciated. And if there's any issues, make sure you speak up. Thanks. So Terry, we are actually, when we look at these things, we're not actually thinking about you know, having regrets in our lifetimes. We're thinking about 200 years from <laughs> exactly. having regrets. That's right. That's, that's what I'm thinking well ahead on that right. one. So, right. You know, and that, that can be a problem because some of these engineering things haven't been around 200 years. So you're making estimates on things that are, are challenging in that respect. It's a but moving target. The moving target. Oh, yeah. Right. And problem came up. Yeah. Sure we know about it. Right. But like there's a lot of judgment calls. Um I certainly don't know, for example, when you showed that diagram of the um the wall was going to key into the bedrock all the way and now it's only going into the till. Uh, I you know I have no idea. Um, you guys have a much better idea of whether that's safe or not. I don't know if anybody really knows, but you guys know better than the rest of us. So we're really relying on you. You know, Terry, one of the interesting things is that if you talk to somebody like David Ropiak about this, and, and if you talk to someone like Charles Haldeman, I don't know if you remember him 30 years ago about this sort of thing, his view would be that we shouldn't talk about this stuff because it makes people nervous about stuff that really isn't that important risk-wise. And I know when you sit here and we're we're talking about these details, it can be very unnerving to, to hear, well, EPA doesn't think this is important or that's important, and yet we are saying something about it as though that's the same thing as somebody is really ignoring a problem and not taking the science into account. I mean, we're we're in a position where EPA is taking us seriously, has right. made a lot of changes at our request, yes. has appreciated our support for changes that they've wanted in things. And that, you know, that's it's we're right. we're in a working relationship that's actually pretty good. And when we think when we're talking about being worried about things, we are being worried about things that normally we wouldn't even get a chance to review. I agree. I think so, it's wonderful. I, th I think it's so, wonderful. I know we're talking about probabilities and, you know, there's no certainty with a lot of this. I understand that. Um, so I really appreciate that you raised all these concerns and I'm not going to go out and um, you know, be all worried about it. I'm just saying, don't hesitate. Um, just keep on doing um, what you what you think is right. Well, and especially there's there's an advantage. You know, we're in a position right now where potentially the town might take ownership of this site, and so we have a lot more power to kind of say, well, we'd like more suspenders here. For exactly. This thing exactly. And, and that kind of thing. But but when we want to fight the battles for the things that really make a difference to the cleanup too, and not exactly. things that are just technical details. Right. Right. Like like if the wall caves in and it's their problem and they have to rebuild it, you know, we don't need to get involved in, in that kind of a thing. But if it's something that happens after the town takes ownership we really have to pay attention. So 
you know. Well, and I'm I'm going to point out, for instance, they decided not to reuse any of the soils that they dug out from under. Oh, really? Oh, oh, yeah. Because yes, of our right. comments about that, so that's that was right. comforting. Yeah. So as opposed to saying you're not your your sampling isn't good enough, they were like, you know, let's just get rid of it all. So that's um, we we do we we have made a difference in in you have. Things, getting stuff off the site. Right. Uh, would you move okay. to finish, Mary? Absolutely. Yeah. Daddy, Nick, any uh, comments? I want to keep I mean, this you're one. Also, the members, because I've, I've mocked it up a little bit. So, but you can have the rest of the okay. right. yeah, okay. Nick, anything? Nothing else. Really no. nice. Okay, Daddy. I just wanted to again introduce myself. I just joined the Concord Board of Health, although I've been a Concord resident. Uh, for over 60 years. I grew up on Harrington Ave, uh, corner Harrington, Old Marlboro, so I know the, the old Starmet site well. Um, and I uh, worked with Concord Emergency Management a number of years ago on a disaster response, and I was the EPREP coordinator at Emerson Hospital and was there the evening there was a, a fire, I think it was like 2007 or eight, at the Starmet site, Nuclear Metals, and how... Um, concerned and scared the firefighters were in responding to that. Um, and we were ready to decontaminate them when they came on site at the hospital. So I, I take all of your work very seriously and all the detail I know is very important. So I, I'll have to point out that the at that time, Chief Willett was the head of the fire department. That's right. And he actually, in he had forced Starmet to put in um, sprinklers mm -hmm. that called um, they called the um, the fire department when they went off and there had been a small fire at the site right the, the sprinklers didn't actually go off because it wasn't that kind of fire but they called the fire department fire department responded they did actually need to use town hoses, you know, fire department equipment that yep. couldn't be de decontaminated yeah, afterwards. Um, and as a result of that <laughs> fire, so so first because they were called, he got a look inside the building. Getting a look inside the buildings meant that he, he could evaluate that they were not storing things safely. Right. And he did an inspection that led to an emergency removal action of contaminated materials in unmarked contaminated material inside the site, improperly stored materials inside the site. There was a big emergency action that happened and his actions led to them abandoning the building and having the buildings removed before the record of decision came out. So that, that was, while it was a, a bad thing for them to have a fire, mm -hmm. it was, it actually, Concord's emergency management of that has been amazing so, yeah that's it that, that's i really did move that that whole project forward quickly so. when was that pan approximately the 2007 or 2011 wow no more like 2007 maybe 2007? I, 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 yeah. I can't remember i remember there were two major i guess 2011 was when they finally abandoned the site so and that was when the building removal began yep. so 2007 was the fire well, Dot, Dot, welcome to the committee, and uh, thank you for serving um, on both committees. And what is your last name? So it's Bernard, B-E-R-N-A-R-D. And I recently retired from the Harvard School of Public Health, where I, yeah. um, for 13 years, I did disaster response, preparedness and response for healthcare and public health uh, research. So that that's my background. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Are you going to, uh, going to email those uh, notes to us? Yeah. So we can review what's going out to Kara. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I'll email them to. I'm going to one. email them to, um, to Ray. Ray's going to write the letter and send it out for review. Yeah. 
to be okay. sent out on Monday. Yeah. So okay. I'll try to get them that out in the next 24 hours. I'll thank get you. that out before I get the minutes. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, I mean, thank you. And likewise, I'll take my notes, but likewise, yours were more thorough scribbling in. So uh, if there's nothing further, I'd like to make a motion to uh, end the meeting. I'll second that. Unless there's anybody opposed, thank you all. Have thank a great you. weekend. Thank you.